Welcome to another episode of The Road Less Traveled. I'm your host, Evan Drisner, and I'm excited about our guest. He's been a guest on my other show, um, but with your partner, Travis Lowe with Blue Moose Media. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. So, <clears throat> when I when we interviewed you and in, um, the Tornado Hunter previously, it was more about the business and how you guys kind of came together. Knowing your backstory, I thought it'd be interesting to have you on because this whole point of this show is talking about the journey and how you end up in a different spot where you probably thought you were going to end up <laughs> when you started. For sure. So, why don't we start with telling us a little bit where you came from? Where, like, where is Travis Lowe from? Where did you grow up? Yeah, sure. Well, I was born and raised in North Battleford. Okay. And, uh, uh, I guess both my parents are originally from Rosetown, uh, so our roots are in Rosetown, but um, my dad worked for SAS Power and got moved to North Battleford. Um, and so, yeah, grew up in a, you know, really healthy middle-class family, um, played a ton of sports in, in North Battleford, uh, played hockey from the age of five all the way until I was uh, done midget AAA, and, and then... Um, uh, you know, had a really good upbringing in North Battleford. It's a, it's a great community, mm -hmm. uh, much to, uh, you know, the uh, uh, demise of what the media says about <laughs> it uh, necessarily, but it really is a great place and, and uh, strong roots there. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of where I came from and, and uh, really enjoyed it there. So you're saying I don't need to keep the doors locked when I'm driving through Battleford? <laughs> Maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, drive with caution. But, yeah, of course. Yeah. So your dad worked for uh, SAS Power. Yeah. Um, your mom, she worked at Credit Union. At Credit Union. Yeah, so 25 years at Credit Union. Dad was at SAS Power for 35 years. And so definitely lifers uh, working at both those corporations. Yeah, so then you growing up in that house, uh, both... Uh, hard-working parents what did you think you were like then did you think I want to work for SAS Power like my dad or did you have totally different aspirations or yeah. did you even have aspirations at that point yeah so I, I actually wasn't really sure so coming out of high school um, I didn't know what I wanted to do actually uh, one of my best childhood friends uh, Brett Payne and I were planning on going to the rigs and uh, working for six months, making some cash and then going traveling. Hmm. Um, and it's super funny now, if you know both him and I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we are not rig guys. And so <laughs> it would have been hilarious to see us try to, to, to do that uh, occupation. But um, now, now we should cue, cue to a scene from uh, Zoolander. Where he the models in the coal mines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can picture you on the rig. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and so I took a year off school. Actually, I didn't go straight to university. I st stuck around the Battlefords for another year. I worked at a sporting good uh, retail store yep. uh, for actually all through high school. So I loved it. it. It was awesome, and that was kind of my first exposure to small business, I guess. And specifically retail, uh, I really enjoyed it, and I really got the hang of, you know, what selling meant and kind of building relationships with customers. And um, so I guess I kind of thought maybe business would be uh, a, you know, kind of a route for me. Um, Brett's mom actually was a financial advisor uh, at Credit Union, and I always really looked up to her and what she was doing. And so I actually kind of grasped onto the idea at that point of like, I think I could do like, you know, something to do with financial, maybe business. And so I wanted to go to commerce. I yeah. wanted to go to the, you know, into business school. I had uh, applied to go uh, to Edmonton, applied to go to Saskatoon. I didn't have the grades for either of them. So I had to stick around uh, North Battleford, challenged a few courses in high school. Uh, and I eventually ended up getting into both uh, Edmonton and Saskatoon. Uh, my girlfriend at the time dumped me um, in Edmonton, <laughs> yeah. and so it made my decision a lot easier. So I came to Saskatoon and, and enrolled in the College of Commerce at the time, now Edwards School of Business. So, so I mean, it's, it's interesting to me, like, especially when you grew up in a house that was very, like, nine to five, kind of stable, steady, and you already had this aspiration of entrepreneurialism just by being slightly exposed to it. Like, where do you think that came from? Well, it's actually, it's interesting when you think about it though, because, so my mom's dad was yep. a farmer. Okay, so um, entrepreneur. So entrepreneur. Yeah, 100%. My dad's dad had multiple businesses actually in Rosetown. So he owned a okay. sporting store there actually. And then he owned an SGI li uh, plate licensing um, <laughs> store there as well. So. My grandfather, both grandpas were entrepreneurs, yeah. and so I've actually never really even thought about that, but that must be a part of where it comes from. Interesting. Yeah. So then you 
just <laughs> your girlfriend broke up with you. Yeah. What was her name? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so she broke up with you. You decide, okay, Saskatoon's the place for me. Great school. How did you decide then what you were going to major in? Like, wh what well, what did you major in? Well, here's the thing. Man. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have much choice. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, you know, I approached uh, commerce with, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the social aspect yeah, of it, yeah. you know? And so I didn't quite have the grades. I wanted to get into finance. Okay, so my ideal was to get into finance yeah. and to go the financial uh, route and becoming a financial advisor. That didn't happen. I had to go management. So management was a new major they just introduced. Uh, they had replaced general business, I think it used to be called. And uh, so I went the management route, which really gives you kind of a nice um, balanced approach of you have to take a certain number of marketing classes, HR, finance, accounting. You have to take a balance of all of them. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, it's actually probably the best thing I ever did was go the management route because it kind of gave me a well-balanced uh, knowledge on all of those different types of subjects. Yeah. Whereas if I had gone just the financial route, it would have just made me really hyper-focused in a bunch of different finance classes. And as a result, as I'm where I'm at right now, which we'll get to, um, I don't use any of those uh, classes or that background at all in yeah. my today world. In my today's world. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So you're in school. I mean, it's hard for me to interview because I know a lot of the a lot of the stuff. <laughs> just, just ask like, the yeah. questions as if you <laughs> exactly, don't know. Exactly. So, what's your name again? So, this really handsome guy interviewed you for the co-op program in third year university. Yeah, he was. I've heard a lot about him. Yeah, yeah, he's so, really charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's got his show on the Shaw Spotlight. Why don't Why don't we actually go to that? So, you're in university. And there's this new program at that time. It was totally new, Brand the co-op program. Yeah, first year. So tell us a bit about the program, and then why did you decide that was an option or something you wanted to do? Yeah. So, um, so I had learned about kind of co-op programs actually back in high school, and the reason why I had applied to both U of A and to uh, U of S. Uh, is that U of S was promising uh, getting a co-op program when they came and did the like orientation types of things to the high school students. U of A already currently had one established. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I applied to both those schools because I always knew that like work experience in the middle of your education seems like a really good idea. Theoretically, I was like, that makes sense. You know, learn about it, go and get some experience in it and then come back to school and complete your degree. And so... I really always wanted to do that. I wanted to take a break in the middle of my school to actually do some of the work. And uh, when they promised me that U of S was going to be introducing it, I was, you know, really happy with that. I chose that route, and you know, as it turned out, they actually were able to get the program in place in my very year that I was eligible for it. Yeah. So uh, they had enrolled only 16 students uh, in the program that year. I think now it's up to like over 100. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it wasn't established at all. So I actually had to go out and try to find my own job at the time. Mm -hmm. They were doing their best job to try to find employers to get you know signed up into the program, yep. and enters you, yep. um, who then kind of got uh, into the program through the back door a little bit through a friend of a friend. Yeah, yeah. And good memory. Yeah. So okay. So then from that perspective, it was. Uh, a good friend of ours, cousin, I think, that was in charge of starting, Brent Wellman. Yep. He was in charge of starting the co-op program. That's right, yep. We had lunch, he did the pitch to me, and I thought, interesting, from an employer's perspective, to get somebody that's eager, that's learning, but also, um, at that point, you're getting someone part-time that has energy and some ideas, it, it felt like a good fit. So then we interviewed, yep. and you pass with flying colors. Yeah. <laughs> so then, so then we, we brought you on, and at that point, were you thinking, okay, I've like, boom, I'm in it. Like I'm, I'm in what I want to be. Because at yeah. that point, that was the financial, financial industry. Financial road. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I was like doing it. I yeah. was, I got my, you know, I was working for a small financial, independent financial firm. It yeah. was awesome. Um, I felt like my path was quite, you know, um, clear in terms of what I was going to do. I was going to, you know, work for the firm for, you know, a year or two years and mm -hmm. then complete my degree and then come back and become a financial advisor. I, I felt like I had it made. Yeah. And I mean, I did go that road. Well, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to say so. And, and we should actually say too, you that end of the co-op year, you got the award for the best co-op student. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I the mean, best. yeah, whatever it was, the co-op student award. Probably wouldn't now that there's a hundred when you're only going to get 16. It also helped that I became like really good friends with my boss yeah. who 
gave rave reviews about his <laughs> student. <laughs> yeah, that probably, that yeah. probably didn't hurt. So you finish, uh, you, you graduated. Um, now you're going, okay, I'm in it. Like, I'm, this is what I want to do. You feel so set up. You, I remember you started taking some courses, right? You yeah. had to get securities license or securities course, Canadian securities course, which isn't easy, and it costs uh, money, right? Yeah, and then the uh, LLQP, which is the un, like the life um, insurance uh, course. So how long was that process? Well, so um, I had gone away traveling actually, so I went to, to Southeast Asia for three months. Mm -hmm. um, when I returned from that uh, tour in, in Asia. Um, I moved back with my parents back in North Battleford and just studied. So yeah. I didn't have any commitments of working and studying. It was really nice that I was just able to focus, focus. for, I think like a month I focused and just studied for those courses and wrote both exams, got the, got both of them, uh, passed both of them and then began my career as a financial advisor. Yeah. The reason, the reason I brought up that detail is because it, it's not like you just graduated from university and then became a financial planner. Like, you were still focused on that being your career path that you entered in extra programs, you studied hard, you passed the tests, you paid for the license, like you did yeah, all of that. Like sure. yep. At that point, came off your your university career with flying colors, co-op uh, program was I great. I not quite say flying colors, but sure. I I'm being it. polite. I know it I wasn't flying it. colors. I got a degree, at, I got a degree on my white. wall, and yeah. that's all that counts. I was just being nice. Yeah, at yeah, best, thanks. it was black and white. I appreciate it, yes. <laughs> so, we're going to take a commercial break, okay? Um, and then I want to jump on um, how you how that path totally changed. Sure. Um, so stay tuned for uh, more of our interview with uh, Travis Lowe with Blue Moose Media, um, and we'll be back soon. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm your host, Evan Drisner, Road Less Traveled, and my guest, Travis Lowe, as we're talking over the uh, commercial break. We're kind of missing a bit of, a, actually, it's a big part of the story because it, sure. it definitely developed a brand for you in where you're currently now, but also so much experience. Uh, Lowe's in motion. Yeah. So it became the largest fundraiser for Parkinson's in Canada, um, which is crazy to think you started that um, basically in my office just trying to figure out a better way to raise some money. So like, give us a bit of that history too, why sure. not? Because I think that adds some perspective to where you are now and how you've uh, been so rooted in the community. Yeah, no, uh, fair. Um, so my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease um, at the age of 48. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I was in second year university when he was diagnosed. So I did two years of fundraising for what was their national fundraiser called the Superwalk for Parkinson's. And for two years in a row, I raised zero dollars. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't great at the pledging effort of it. Um, and so I guess, you know, fast forward to now working with you, I think we were, you know, probably sitting in our office and I would have been, you know, brainstorming some ideas, probably telling you, like, I can't believe I've, you know, raised no money in the past two years. And just basically came up with this idea to host a party. I had, uh, throughout university, held birthday pub crawls every year. And through that experience, I had learned that I could usually turn a bit of a profit on them because you charge like 10 bucks a head. If you get like 300 people on the bus, it only used to cost you like 150 bucks. So I was always up like, you know, some cash yeah. in the night. And so you know, I kind of thought, well, I could just maybe elevate that a little bit higher, do it a little bit more professional and raise some money for this cause that has impacted my family so much. And so I think we were brainstorming ideas and came up with, well, we should do a cabaret. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, my band can play at the cabaret. And yeah. I was like, okay, let's, let's do <laughs> it. it. it was, and that's like, it was and like that. That's basically it. It, <laughs> it. it kind of happened by fluke. For sure. But what didn't happen by fluke, and as I reflect on that whole experience, the whole Lowe's Emotion experience, it's truly my first entrepreneurial venture. Yeah. It had, it had the entire formula for what you have to be, uh, how to be successful as an entrepreneur. 
you know, we I, I can still remember it as clear as day. I, I created a financial projection for the event because I had no idea. I had I I can remember uh, the I had built this financial projection and I had projected that we could net twenty three thousand. Yeah. I sent it home to my parents in North Battleford and said, I think this is what we can do. You know, if if all of my numbers and projections and like you know assumptions and whatever. Uh, pan out we're gonna make some money and I called to get the liquor license and I'll never forget this woman I said to her I'm hosting this event in Warman I need a liquor license for this event um, and her response was you know a lot of people do this often and don't make any money and I can just remember being so like a little bit like discouraged a little bit like really like mad that she was saying this yeah, to me yeah. as a young ambitious person who wanted to do this for like something I was super passionate about yeah. And I can remember just being like, you know, screw you. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make uh, this happen. As it turned out, that financial projection actually turned out exactly as we had uh, projected. And we made 23000 yeah, that first year. That. Yeah, And it grew every year to and the point where how much have we raised over the 10 years? So we netted. Uh, so proceeds, we contributed 650000 to That's Merce awesome. Parkinson's over a 10-year time period. So and the biggest crowd we had was? Uh, 1,200. Yeah, that's awesome. And we did 1,200 for a few years and then... And scaled it down because it just got too big. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it like, yeah, anyway, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that definitely is a part of the story. So now you've started this fundraiser, you've got your everything you need to start your career at that point. Yep. When did that change? Because well, I know now that yeah. it changed, yeah. but to the viewer, like what happened? Well, and I always, I mean, I mentor um, a lot of students within the Edward School of Business still. No, that's and too I, bad. And, <laughs> and I always, <laughs> but I always tell them, I said, you know, you may think that you have a path mm -hmm. and you may, and I think you should try to go that route, but what you need to be willing to do is to pivot yep. uh, because likely, and this is the same thing in business. Uh, you likely think it's going to go one way and it's for sure almost always going to go a different direction. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to be uh, open-minded enough and flexible enough to be able to pivot and go a different direction. Yep. And so when I came out of university, I thought I knew it. I thought I was going down the financial route. I went, you know, got my securities, got did all that, became that advisor. I lasted four months. Yeah. I lasted four months and I was like, this isn't for me. I'm, I'm done. So I quit that, handed, you know, handed my resignation in, uh, had a job lined up uh, with the minister of the government. So yep. worked uh, in a constituency office for eight months. Realized I didn't like that. I quit <laughs> that. Then I was offered another job in the insurance industry, so kind of getting back into that financial road, yeah. but not quite as a financial advisor. I was now educating financial advisors on insurance products. And, you know, that was going okay. I did that for about a year. And then the money or the, the charity that we've been raising money for through Lowe's in Motion, yep. Parkinson's Society of Saskatchewan, approached me and said, we would like you to put your name in. We're hiring an executive director for the organization. It's the first paid staff we've ever had. And I was 25 years old at the time. And I said, I, I mean, I'm underqualified. I've only got a, a degree and a couple years experience, but sure, I'll put my name in. Luckily enough, I was given that opportunity and you know, became the executive director at age 25. And, yeah, um, that's crazy. and you know, did that for a four year time period. And it was by far uh, the biggest learning curve I'll ever experience. Um, and learned a ton about operating a business and, you know, specifically actually charitable organizations. Mm -hmm. So working within a board of directors and... Yeah, working with the board, that's a whole other Working with the board group. and all the different committees and um, all the different support groups throughout the province and establishing new groups. And I was part of an executive le leadership team across Canada because they're all made up of society, Parkinson societies. And so I had peers in each province. And so I was flying across the country um, working on national initiatives and... Um, obviously my provincial mandate, you know, I was responsible for all of Saskatchewan, um, but then I also had to work in the local community. So I was dealing with, you know, multiple different stakeholders all the time. And it was, it was heavy for a young guy. Um, so, so much experience too, but yeah. also like, I can imagine just feeling like <laughs> yeah. deer in headlights. It was, but so, it was awesome. So I know how passionate you were about that position. Did you feel like you just hit a wall like that you, you did you feel like me and sometimes this happens in business where your role only suits a certain time like it's it, like did you feel like you were just there to build it and start it and then you tapped out or did you just lose energy or did you think no I want to try something else like w what transitioned from the executive director role well it was a combination of a few different things um you know to your point yes I mean 
when I came in there, my whole goal was I wanted to get this organization, you know, going. I wanted it, you know, not just to be a volunteer run organization, to have, you know, uh, a good foundation of an organization that would be sustainable for many years. Mm. And so we did an organization review when I first came in there. Very short term focused, clean up, you know, provide some governance structure to the board, um, you know, start to uh, really define our service delivery and, and get our financials in order and really uh, start to um, get some, some of the cleanup done, I guess. After we completed that first year, then we set, you know, I can't call it a strategic plan because it's quite short term focus. It was a two year yeah. uh, plan. And so it was more operational in nature, um, but it has some strategic um, initiatives uh, intertwined into it. And so that had a lot of, uh, again, really solid foundation. Now this is starting to build a team and start to really focus on, you know, establishing new support groups throughout the province and, you know, uh, really provide way better service to our uh, population and, and hire on fundraising staff so that we could raise more money so that we could, you know, develop stronger yeah. support services. Um, so we did that for two years and then we developed a five year strategic plan. And then we were working on a number of different national initiatives to um, basically uh, unify the organizations across the country. And so I was on a number of different committees tasked with this. And so it was at that point that I was like, you know, if I want to see this through to the end, it's probably another three to five years. And I didn't know if I had it in me. I was also at that time struggling with some emotional battles. Yeah. Um, you know, you can imagine living with, you know, my dad living with Parkinson's mm -hmm. and it's being very close to my family. Uh, and then seeing all these new people being diagnosed yeah, with course. Parkinson's, it, you know, it was, it was a difficult thing for me mm -hmm. to deal with. And so I started the battle emotionally. And so it was at that time I just said, you know, I'm going to give them ample notice, give them three months notice and, and you know, provided my transition. So then I know then you went traveling, yep. you tried some stuff. And then let's fast forward to Blue Moose. So. Sure. How, how did Blue Moose start? Because that, that necessarily wasn't your passion at the beginning. Like you weren't like traveling be like, I should go back and do social media stuff. Right? Like <laughs> no, how, was, how did it happen? It was probably anti-social media. Yeah, 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 um, yeah I would say. For yeah, sure. so uh, I've always known, uh, after I finished commerce and after I you know went that financial route, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to start a business. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I loved the experience of Lowe's Emotion. Um, when I went away traveling, I knew I wanted to kind of expose myself to a bunch of different businesses. Um, and when I came home, I was trying to figure out what that idea was. So I literally was going through brainstorming. I had probably a dozen different business ideas jotted down, some financial projections, you know, kind of built out. <laughs> and I was just paddleboarding, catching up with an old uh, friend from university, Ricky Forbes, um, who had just finished his kind of stint uh with tornado hunters yep. um and so they had got this tv show for tornado hunters they, yep. they chase storms throughout yep. the states i'm sure a lot of saskatchewan people know of them and they got that because of their social media following mm -hmm. so at the time he had about a half a million followers following him on social media platforms um i am not a big social media guy um but i had that strong business background and so him and i were paddleboarding down the river and just said like i wonder if we could combine both of our respective backgrounds all handle the business side you handle the social media side and we just went for it we uh you know a lot of time they'll teach you you should build a business plan and we didn't quite do that yeah uh we kind of jotted some financial projections i kind of had an idea of what the service might be yeah but we were just kind of going with it and faking it until we made it yeah so. and now i mean it's a couple years in three years in how yeah. many staff do you have uh, we have five staff. And at least from my perspective, one of the most respected training, social media training uh, facilitators in the province. Yep. Um, it's funny how life took you from North Battleford, Sports Centre, well, Sports sport Centre, like you're on TSN, <laughs> you know what I meant. Um, Saskatoon, financial industry, you're there, to executive director, now to uh, CEO, um, a, a marketing social media training business um, that has been successful continues to grow and continues and will continue to be successful yeah would you ever have guessed no I wouldn't no <laughs> well thanks no. for being my guest Travis. Yeah, thanks we appreciate hearing yeah. the story stay tuned for upcoming episodes of the road less traveled and of course other amazing shows on Shaw Spotlight